Hi you my dear friends welcome back to the channel in this video i will talk about the implementation approach number 1 to overcome the isi basically in case of 4g we wanted to go for higher bandwidth to support uh, higher data rate right so when such a large bandwidth is used the observation is the channel was not flat for the complete uh, 10 megahertz the reason was there was a severe isi so how to overcome this isi one of the approaches that we had seen in the previous video was to divide this entire bandwidth into subbands so when we divide it to subbands the subband size let's say for example 3 megahertz then the symbol duration increases and that will be greater than the delay spread and in this case the isi will be very less to know this concept go, please go to the previous videos to get the better clarity so for now to understand uh, uh, this subband uh, a concept and how to implement this subband concept using uh, the circuit or mathematical expression so i will consider uh, only two subbands for now for the sake of simplicity one at uh, 2.5 uh, megahertz and another one is at uh, 7.5 megahertz all right so total uh, size is 10 megahertz and uh, the subband size is 3 megahertz to understand that uh, we should go through the up, and up conversion and down conversion and uh, the concept of that uh, was explained uh, for a single carrier system in the previous videos please go through that so now i will talk about the up conversion in this case okay so since uh, there is a subband in each subband we can transmit one uh, symbol i i would have i will consider one symbol on one subband f1 so the symbol uh, one should be allocated to f1 and we should shift uh, that to, to frequency f1 so this is the operation corresponding to that uh, Uh, using the uh, properties of Fourier transform, so then uh, I will be up converting using uh, FC, and uh, I would uh, get the signal like this at this point. Similarly, XP to of T also I should be doing uh, the frequency shift and up conversion. And uh, since uh, we need to get a very good data rate, uh, we are going to multiplex uh, these two particular subbands, and for that uh, we are going to perform the addition. Okay, so at this point, uh, you know, at this point the signal will be. the signal can be written like this okay so then i will consider these as the black box and at the receiver i will be doing the down conversion okay so for that i will use uh, this exponent um, to uh, bring back the signal to the base band and uh, if i multiply this to the incoming signal okay uh, uh, to this signal which is same as this then i will see that this quantity this quantity get cancels and i will left out with xp1 of t and this quantity and this quantity will be orthogonal to each other mathematically we can prove that i will not go through the details but uh, if they are orthogonal then we will not have any problem with xp or xb2 of t so we, i will be left out with only xp1 of t similarly the same thing will be followed in the second component also to extract xp2 of t okay so this is mathematically fine but these to implement uh, them in the hardware it would be difficult right Orbit component would produce the real signal. For so for that, uh, uh, the real quantity of these things should be taken, right? So I will say x p one of t will be multiplied with cos omega one c t. Cos omega one c t will be f c plus f one. Using a local oscillator, we can implement this. So this is the real quantity of the uh, you know exponent uh, exponent uh, shown here. Okay. so this can be implemented using hardware and using the multiplier uh, i will get the signal uh, here uh, which is uh, xp1 of t and cos omega 1 ct similarly xp2 of t also we can do the same operation and we can get the signal so after multiplexing finally we will get the signal here considering this as a block box at the receiver i will get the same signal like this so now i need to do the down conversion in the down conversion also i would take the real quantity because then only i can implement uh, it with uh, Uh, the hardware which is local oscillator will i be able to get back my xp1 of t with that okay let us see that so when i multiply with cos omega ct okay so this quantity when i multiply with cos omega ct i will get this expression so in this expression if you see cos omega 1 cos omega c1t and this factor i will get 1 plus cos 2 omega ct uh, by 2 okay uh, that will be with xp1 of t then for xp2 of t this is cos a this is cos b then i i will get 1 by 2 into cos a minus b into cos a plus b so this expression uh, is straight forward uh, now if you clearly see you know if you take the spectrum of uh, this one so one one quantity uh, you know 
one quantity is at dc that corresponds to the xp1 of t okay if you take the frequency spectrum of xp1 of t uh, you will get like this and uh, you know the one more quantity is at 2 fc1t okay that is i frequency component i have not shown here uh, and uh, here for xb2 of t you know there is f2 minus f1 so f2 i had considered it as 7.5 uh, 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 megahertz okay so and the f1 i had considered it as uh, 2.5 megahertz so let me just to go back to the previous so this is the one okay so so if i subtract these two i will get to 5 megahertz so at 5 megahertz you will see that uh, there is xb2 of t now this is again uh, the i frequency component so that is also will be eliminated with low pass filter so i have not shown here so basically at this point okay at this point uh, at the output of uh, a low pass filter uh, if i take the spectrum that would look like this okay but that consists of both xb1 of t spectrum and xp2 of t spectrum as well but uh, what i need is just xp1 of t at that point so i should be using a low pass filter okay so that low pass filter just filters out uh, only xb1 of t and uh, no component related to xb2 of t should uh, include in that low pass filter okay so then finally if i do that then i will get xb1 of t note that here there is a filter roll off okay this filter roll off is there but whereas the spectrum is getting ended at this point but we need to have some extra uh, band uh, kept uh, to include uh, the uh, filter roll off so there should be a god band included that is why you know when i had considered uh, uh, the sub band i had uh, i had considered uh, for simplicity only two sub bands and i had given sufficient uh, gap between them the reason was to include this filter roll off otherwise if i would have uh, you know uh, if i would have placed close to that uh, first sub band then it would have come uh, within the filter roll off and uh, some quantity of x2 of uh, uh, xb2 of t would have also included uh, along with uh, this uh, xb1 of t okay after the low pass filter so this concept uh, is actually nothing but the frequency division multiplexing basically where you know uh, portion of the band is given to one say, symbol another portion is given to another symbol and between them there is a sufficient god band allocated to take care of the filter roll off so in this case i have allocated 3 megahertz for band 1 3 megahertz for, for band 2 so total 6 megahertz was considered and for that we could achieve only you know 6 mbps whereas we wanted 10 mbps because the entire bandwidth is uh, uh, 10 mbps right so we could able to mitigate the isi to a good extent but uh, uh, there is a huge compromise in the bandwidth and in the and and if you see uh, you know this fdm has got to disadvantages right because a lot of bandwidth is getting wasted right here that's why we were we were not able to utilize the complete 10 megahertz that is one disadvantage and if you see the circuit tree as well uh, we are implementing a lot of uh, hardware here there is one local oscillator for uh, one subband another local oscillator for another subband what if we want to you know scale up the circuit uh, scale up the system then we need more local oscillator that is not a feasible solution uh, practically it will be very costly so uh, these two in, for these two disadvantages this is not a very attractive solution right what if we could actually you know place these two subbands very close then maybe you know we could have gone for three subbands where it will utilize nine megahertz for which we would have achieved a nine mbps data rate right so in the upcoming video let let, let us see you know uh, what are the other approaches where we could uh, achieve uh, you know the better uh, data rate and then at the same time we will be in a position to mitigate the isi thank you very much have a great day bye bye please do subscribe